today's a really boring day. Um, well, it's not a really boring day. I started it off, well, I took this squirt to school, um, but then I had a doctor's appointment, which is always fun. Let me tell you, if you're a man over 40, a doctor's appointment is significantly less fun than you would think. Uh, so now I'm off to meet a friend for lunch. Um, you know, stuff like that. It's nice to be downtown. I don't really get downtown as much as I used to. <clears throat> you know, the lifespan of any given city, maybe I'm not putting this right. Okay. I don't mean the lifespan as in cities fall down. I mean, take whatever city you live in right now, at this point in time, this minute, this hour, and then add six months onto the date, the city has changed, and by, by which I mean behind me over there, there's a new condo complex going in, because why not, right? Um, and every time one of these goes in, something gets knocked down to put it in. So like, if you take the state of, of, of this city, because this is the one I live in right now, as the city exists today, it changes monthly practically as I said construction everywhere I'm not kidding like everywhere 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 I mean really You know, when I'm talking about the lifespan of a city like that, I'm not talking about, you know, Atlantis slipping into the ocean or Troy being put to the sword or anything. I'm talking about, I'm just talking about, wow, the state of your city or my city as it is right now. Like, take a snapshot of the city, of the whole town. Every building, every business, every restaurant, snapshot. Six months to a year, ten years later, a lot of it will be different. You know, cities are not static. They live and breathe. Um, they change, they morph over time. That's why a city like of 400 years looks nothing like it did 400 years ago. They grow. Well, unless it's Baltimore or something like that, in which case it shrinks. But, you know, generally speaking, cities grow and small towns shrink. But, you know, it's just, there, there are entire industries. Sorry, guys. There are entire industries based on the changes that a city goes through in its lifetime. Right now, a lot of them are building condos. You know, even like a nice old neighborhood like this one isn't completely static. I mean, just over there, there's more bloody road work, except that that is part of the metro system. I think it's part of keeping the air flowing to the trains underground or something. But anyway, that's that's kind of not what I was going to talk to you about. It's a nice day. It's a beautiful day to be uh, outside in Montreal, I'll tell you that. So, we got a couple of projects to do around the house which re which require lumber. So I'm off to price some, some cedar, and I figure I want to invite you guys along for the ride. For the record, these are not fireplaces. I don't care what you say. See these? See these? Wood burning stoves. Banned in the city of Montreal. I don't know why they're selling them here. Treated lumber is so much nicer in this new brown shade than in that crappy old green. Still doesn't really have the the magic of real cedar though. Meh. The way you know you've walked into the cedar aisle before you even look at the wood is the smell. To me cedar is the, the smell of 
a British Columbian forest on a rainy day. I have good memories associated with this smell. And you know, the lumber doesn't smell exactly the same as the trees or the forest or anything, but it still sort of has a soup soma of that, just sort of at the bottom of it. Like the, uh, if it was a perfume, I'd call it the heart note. Is uh, is a rainy day in a BC forest. I do love that. You know, being a consumer here in Quebec is an interesting experience. Those of you who are all about Buy American will understand this to a certain extent. And that's that there's a willingness to jump through a certain number of hoops and to spend a little extra to get something that was made in Quebec. And the thing is, it's not always necessarily made here, but the company should be Quebecois. And we will buy some second-rate stuff to support another Quebecer, which is good in some ways and not in others. Um, I'm a big believer in buy local. I'm a bigger believer in buy from a small company. Even better, a one or two man shop. I like to buy from Quebec as well. But the problem is that this philosophy isn't, it's not based on a feeling that building stuff, that making stuff overseas, uh, you know, adds carbon footprint or, or anything like that, or any belief in lower quality manufacture elsewhere. It's sort of tied up in nationalism, which may seem weird when you're talking about a province, but I'm not going to get political because I have other things to think about, honestly. And I find that a lot of... I support buy local. I, I like the idea of buying things that have a lower carbon footprint. I, I support the idea of supporting your... You know, the guy who's building chairs or whatever in your town or, or in your geographical area. I find that a lot of the, you know, by American, by Quebecois, by Canadian, by British, a lot of these philosophies are not based on anything other than, you know, an us against them. Not overtly necessarily, but it's, an, it's a nationalism thing. And if you think about it, if you're sitting in Montreal, local can mean Vermont, right? Quebec is huge. Quebec is ginormous. If someone's making something in Kujuak, which is way up at the top of the province. We're talking, I mean, so for me, a buy local could mean Ottawa. Two hour drive that way. Two hour drive that way, you're heavily into Vermont or, or upper New York State. You know, two hour drive that way, you're still not out of Quebec yet. You're not, you're not even at the capital. So that would be buy local to me. A guy making whatever stuff in northern Vermont okay, it's a different dollar. Buying American is very expensive right now, especially when you work in, you know, the border, let alone the, the, the exchange rate. But I mean, what I'm saying is buy local for me, you know, the other end of Ontario is definitely not local. So I don't know. I mean, I, at the end of the day, I like seeing made in Canada on something because it's, we don't make anything in North America anymore, it seems, you know? I don't know how I got into this. It, it was sort of, it was a tangent and then, you know, the camera fell over and blah, blah, blah. So I'm sitting here in this city that is under constant construction right now. And I'm uh, getting set up to do a little construction on my own. Macro, micro, all the same thing. <laughs> all right, let's get out of here. After the park? Uh, going swimming. Going swimming. Now, I'm going to make you pass daddy. <laughs> okay. So, uh, after we're finished playing, we're going to go to Camille's swimming lesson. 
-hmm. And after that, we're going to go home and have supper. Mm -hmm. What else? Uh, and then... No, I mean, like, what do you want to say to them? You were you wanted to say something to them when I was not being nice. No, I was just telling them about what we're going to do tonight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Now for any of you who've watched a lot of Casey Neistat, you'll recognize these bikes behind me. Um, <clears throat> you would probably call them city bikes. But what you might not realize is that no matter where you are in the world, if you're riding one of those bikes, it was designed and made right here in Quebec. So if you do use the Bixies or city bikes or whatever you call them in your city, Canada thanks you for your business. Mm -hmm.